here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mysteries After Dark. I am your host, Jerry. You will see that uh, something new is on the screen for those of you that are watching. I've been wanting to do something like this for a while because honestly, I do not enjoy having a camera pointed at my face. So Seth over at Bear Apparel came up with this awesome little backdrop right here. I think it's kind of cool. He's working on a few others as well. He sent me about three different ones to pick from. And I figured, hey, this one uh, this one looks pretty good. You got a UFO and a Bigfoot in it. Not much more you could ask for than that, I don't think. So let's go ahead and jump into tonight's episode. I was trying to think of catchy titles. I thought of, of Wolf and Man, then I thought Metallica might sue me. So Wolf and Man, drop the of, and hey, I should be good. So yes, tonight's episode is all about werewolves, or at least a little bit about werewolves. And this concept has so permeated our culture. We have movies about it. We, we have songs. Prime example, Metallica, I just mentioned. Blue, or not Blue October, uh, Typo Negative did another one called Wolf Moon. So it's something that is very much a part of the, uh, the American culture, Americana, but it's not limited to just us. And as I started to work on tonight's episode, and, and I'm looking through, well, in general, paranormal topics, and I'm noticing, I, I guess, what you would consider an uneasy trend. So up until maybe five or eight years ago, reports of cryptid, cryptids or other weird animals were scarce. Uh, maybe, I don't know, every few months or so, you might see some report that a per person witnessed a creature that doesn't exactly fit into the, the known animal kingdom, to put, it, to put it lightly. But as time went on, those reports, they, they seem to increase with frequency. And probably, I don't know, in the last year, I would say, it seems like every month there's multiple reports of different types of creatures, people witnessing a a Bigfoot or a Mothman shadow entity or, well, perhaps more terrifying, a werewolf. Believe it or not, sightings of werewolves and, and other uncannily large canines, they have been with us for thousands of years. And over those years, the reports, as I mentioned, they have uh, increased in frequency. You have to wonder, are, are these creatures real? Perhaps in the dark of night, someone sees something and their imagination well, runs wild, and now suddenly a 125-pound dog becomes this 400-pound this lurking creature hell-bent on your demise. <laughs> and, hey, thinking that it is all in your imagination, perhaps that provides some comfort to us. But in ancient times, these creatures, they were considered to be very, very real, with numerous reports coming out from all across the country even ancient Greece, these, these monsters, these wolfmen uh, becoming unwilling participants within the Colosseum for gladiator events. Europe, Europe has been barraged by, uh, by these creatures throughout history, although those reports don't, they don't necessarily depict uh, you know, within the pictures or the testimonials that the person actually changes from a, a wolf into a man or a man into a wolf. Um, what they do describe is a large dog-like creature which feeds on humans. So something interesting I found while I, while I was researching this, this episode for tonight. All of us, well, should be if you're not, we're all familiar with the Salem Witch Trials. But have you ever heard of the German Werewolf Trials? Probably not. And it wasn't limited to just Germany. Throughout vast regions of Europe, people were actually put on trial for being werewolves, many times enduring a, a more horrific fate than those that would later be accused of being a witch. These, these werewolf trials, as they were referred to, fired up in the 1400s and ran for about 300 years. Some of those accused, they were actually found to have human body parts in their home. That's, yeah. I think that might not smell too good after a few days of, of sitting there, but they took this very seriously. Well, then again, you know, perhaps, perhaps these things, these creatures at night that we see, 
or perhaps the reason the reason our human mind perceives these things i guess is because there's some type of genetic memory stored in our dna that's been passed down through the generations from our ancestors uh, perhaps they actually encountered some type of a large canine creature and when we see something move in the dark somehow somehow that memory is brought back and it is interpolated into that event it's pushed forward if we're if we're going to believe the stories of the old world then there are some things we simply must consider the original irish wolfhound you see what we have today it is a a diminutive creature compared uh, to its its original bloodline oftentimes the wolfhound from ireland it's described as being the size of a horse that this animal could run alongside a horse reach over bite the rider upon the shoulder or the torso and tear them from their trusty steed indeed that is a huge dog <laughs> now along that same vein we also have the black shook the black shook i don't know if the accent's good or not now we did we did find remains of an enormous canine that was buried along with some pottery located in england and that story i find very interesting because they always promised us dna results that 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 they will you know disclose the particular breed of that dog but everything fell silent we were never offered a conclusion we were never told what it is or what the dna uh, what animal it belonged to or what particular breed of canine we never got that i uh i don't know looking at the pictures from the dig site this animal was enormous the other people in the trench with this this dog i guess we'll say this animal um when you compare the size of those people in correlation to this creature it very much appears that from its rump to its nose it seems to be about six feet long perhaps more which means on all fours this animal could have looked you square in the eyes but again we have had people come forth confess their sins admit they are werewolves and say that they have physically changed hmm that's rather interesting but there's there's more to the story i guess you would say there was an individual who was locked up in jail and he claimed to be just such a creature he was a drunken disorderly he was drunk and he was yelling and doing bad things so he had to be locked up and as dusk turned into night and the moon began to rise outside his window cell he started screaming to the guards confessing that he was in fact a werewolf but the the story takes another interesting twist you see on each of those cell doors there's a small sliding steel plate the opening too small for a human head and the plate too strong for a human to break out somehow this individual managed to do just that from within his cell he struck the plate so hard that it detached from the door and he was somehow able to uh, shove his head which reportedly from the guards did not look quite human but it did not look like a werewolf either but he managed to get that through the opening and began snarling and drooling and making guttural sounds so is it just a case of mental illness a condition now referred to as lycanthropy or is it possible that lycanthropes werewolves dogmen whatever you want to call them could it be that they are real could these could these creatures be the source of animal mutilations across the world stretching back for centuries could there could there perhaps be a virus i want to say that as much as i try to get that as close as i can to agent smith when he was talking to morpheus a virus that has the ability to infect a human and when certain conditions are right that virus causes that person to undergo a rapid metamorphosis 
I have to admit, the, the idea is fascinating, isn't it? A way for an ordinary person, me and you, to become something more almost, almost like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. As a doctor, no one cares about him. No one looks his way or pays him any attention. He's just a, a small little man going about his life. But as the beast, oh, things are different then, aren't they? People can't help but to notice the beast the creature. So perhaps what lycanthropy really is, it's a, a mental condition brought about by the need to, to be noticed, to be seen, to somehow be empowered, to be more than what we are in our, our daily busy lives running back and forth. So let's say, let's say there is perhaps a virus going with mythology or folklore. It was spread through the bite, much like rabies. Then again, perhaps victims of, of rabies have been the cause for these reports, but I digress. This virus, let's say, causes bones to decrease or increase in length and thickness. The muscle mass grows larger. The dislocation of joints and the ability uh, to restrain all of that which makes us human. Our compassion, our empathy, everything that we are, everything that separates us from beast, all of that gives way to a to a bloodlust from what this this virus could do to our brain. All but the primitive, the animal or lizard brain as some people some people might refer to it, all of it shut down, allowing our our most primitive compulsions to come raging to the surface rather interesting idea I think so we've laid out a few options perhaps a a seclusive species of canine perhaps a virus that causes a, a very real physiological change or perhaps some type of mental illness but of course we can't leave it there can we there's always other possibilities I suppose it just depends on how far down the rabbit hole you you really want to go Is it red pill or blue pill the possibilities only limited by how far you're willing to expand your imagination it could be that these things which are seen perhaps they they come and go as they choose perhaps perhaps they come here and to hunt and they've done so for hundreds or even thousands of years convergent evolution says that an advanced species would share many attributes with us. The same building blocks that, that make all of life, those building blocks, they are the most common elements throughout the cosmos and all other life would most likely be based on them. Some people like to, some people like to imagine creatures that are almost unfathomable. But in all reality, every other planet will uh, have life just as diverse as, as Earth is, and many of those creatures on those planets, they will have a striking resemblance to the creatures here on Earth. Take a look at the Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger looks very much like a canine, but it's not. It's a completely different species. Then one could argue that we all, we all share the same ancestor. If what we're told about uh, panspermia is real, then life all across the cosmos would indeed share one common ancestor. Therefore, life on those distant worlds, they would be our cousins. It is possible that these mythological creatures are actually, uh, and if we're going to go there, let's go there, an advanced species that comes here for sport, much like the Predator. Have you seen the new movie, Prey? Oh, so good. So good. I hope they continue that line and keep it going anyway perhaps they're from another planet or even a parallel reality and believe me I know that that sounds like a far-fetched idea but since we have the government now telling us that aliens are here maybe this is a possibility we need to talk about something I don't know we could look into some of you uh, you know some of you will hear this and you'll think to yourself there's there's no way, no way we could have such a creature roaming our woods or 
our back roads. But then I would remind you of a creature referred to as the Beast of Bray Road. The local authorities even had a folder titled Werewolf. This is where they would store all the reports tucked away in a nice little filing cabinet. We had a very legitimate reporter who was sent to this small little town to do nothing more than a quick field report. Both her and her editor thinking it would be, be just a little skit. You know, these little backwoods people have no clue what's going on. They're mistaken a bear or a giraffe, I don't know. Luckily, she happens to be an investigative journalist, and she actually decided to do her due diligence. She got to see the drawings and read the reports, and she left there a changed person. What she initially thought was nothing more than some pranks or jokes turned out to be something very real that had the citizens living in fear. The sheriff actually gave an interview, and this, this is rather interesting. And it's something I'm never going to forget, actually. He said, I don't necessarily believe in werewolves, but if one wanted to expand their mind far enough to accept such possibilities, then yes, I feel far more comfortable having silver bullets in my revolver. That to me is probably one of the most compelling pieces of this whole report, aside, of course, from the eyewitness testimonials. The local law enforcement enforcement agency felt the need to reach out to a local gunsmith and have cartridges for their revolver made using silver bullets, silver projectiles, essentially. This creature, it was witnessed by them. So even though the sheriff might not have been 100% on board, his deputies, a lot of them definitely were, and they patrolled the streets feeling a little bit safer, carrying silver bullets. Now, this problem, it isn't limited to America or, or even Europe. India, it's located in Asia. You should know where that is on a map. A little bit over a year ago, there were multiple reports of a werewolf-type creature stalking the towns at night, leaping from, from rooftop to rooftop and traversing the alleyways. You see, this problem, it, it plagues the world, both in ancient history and modern times. We have cave drawings that depict the transformation of humans to wolves, yet we are told that it is perhaps artistic flair or, or imagination, that perhaps it's a spirit guide or something, something to that effect. You see, it can't be real. Of course not. Academia never, never stops to ask itself, yeah, could these people actually be painting something that they've seen? Because right next to this, this transformation, we have common, average, everyday animals. But since these, these few drawings depicting this transformation don't match our accepted understanding of science, then... Every other one's okay, but that one over there, that's just some crazy cave dweller being uh, eccentric. Interesting how they like to pick and choose what does and does not fit into the box. That said, the idea of a human that can transform into an animal is so prevalent in Navajo culture that you are not allowed to say the name skinwalker if you go to the reservation asking about it you will be escorted off the premises and you uh, you're not going to ever get back on there again you are going to be banned it that that scenario i know how that sounds these these people in modern times they don't believe in such things but that very event has played out with reporters and one time it was on television the gentleman was kicked off the reservation, and if he would have stepped foot back on there, he would have found himself in jail. I don't know about you, but tribal prison does not appeal to me very, very much at all. What's more frightening is that we have had deaths on the reservation 
directly attribute it to the skinwalker the reason why they don't make you know the mainstream news the ones that we trust so so much it's all handled by tribal police that's why you don't hear about it they don't want it talked about so it is quietly quietly swept under the rug and buried in france in 1577 a large black dog like creature and there's a reason for that wording i'll get to it here shortly it ripped through a church killing most of the parishioners the priest drew out what it looked like and the claws are definitely not something that you see on a dog but again it's reported as dog-like it's just it could walk on two legs and had claws hmm a very very similar event played out about 700 years earlier and again it was documented there's there's one thing that the Catholic Church is really good at documentation these folks write down everything that they see everything that they do um, they keep precise impeccable records and that helps people like me hundreds and hundreds of years later because we can look at those we can access those online now about the about the same time as the last attack in France by this dog creature that could walk on two legs with claws we have an we have a wood carving of another animal that looks pretty much identical feasting on children hmm but it's you know 800 miles away just something to think about now back to our our french our french werewolf it's rather interesting because they stated that this creature essentially materialized before them so suddenly it wasn't there then it was there and if this had come from other people rather than the priest you might say it's a flight of fancy just people spreading rumors but the deaths are documented the drawing is there and the records have been as i said meticulously kept so with this with this creature that wasn't there then materialized before them i i compare that to what we what we heard from the defense intelligence agency and of course you knew i was going to tie aliens into this come on now what we learned from the dia is that whatever these crafts are in our skies and what whatever whoever their occupants may be they have some type of a a cloaking device where they can appear to materialize or dematerialize and i have to ask could that could that be why all of this keeps keeps getting swept under the rug even though even though we've had the subcommittee hearing talking about these entities from another world even though we have the the reports from the defense intelligence agency talking about these entities from another world <laughs> could it be that the the mainstream news don't want to talk about it or the reason why it it continues to be quietly shoved into a dark corner somewhere could it be that that this is being done because the reality of the situation is is more horrifying than we could possibly imagine Hmm. Imagine this, a, a species that can come and go as they please. They can materialize or dematerialize or, let's say, cloak and uncloak right before us. And what if they look at us as nothing more than, than meat or food, something, something to be chased and hunted down for sport? Maybe they just like the taste of humans. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that the things that are, that are here with us, the things that former secretary, or sorry, former Senator Harry Reid, 
the, the things that he sent out a letter to the defense secretary stating that we, we need a way to keep the humans safe from, that somehow they are, they are tied to or they are in fact these creatures. These, these things that used to stalk about in the shadows as, as humans huddled around a fire pit clinging to the life, or to the light, sorry. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Imagine, and I don't know when you're listening to this or if you're listening to this, but imagine, perhaps, you're alone right now in your room listening, listening to the sound of my voice with nothing more than the light from your cell phone screen illuminating the room. You hear what sounds like footsteps and then something deeply breathing, perhaps you, you think you see something move out of the corner of your eye. And then, as you listen to my last words being uttered, you look up and see a a black creature is something from the most terrifying nightmare you've ever had slowly materializing before your eyes as though a mist slowly sliding down revealing this creature's piercing hungry gaze upon you hmm. and that ladies and gentlemen is why my wedding ring is silver <laughs> who knows maybe there's a if these things are real, there's a different or an additional element that, that makes up their biology and, and somehow silver's toxic to these creatures. Maybe that's why that has been passed down for thousands of years. Now, I'm not saying I believe in werewolves, but if one was to expand their mind far enough to accept such things, then much like that sheriff... Uh, having this wedding ring does bring me peace of mind. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it. I kept it short for you. I'm going to try to keep these off. From, yeah, maybe if I don't have a guest, a half hour or less. So thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Mysteries After Dark. I am your host, Jerry. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I kept it kind of fun. Until next time, be safe. Bye.